What's going on? You're listening to the Three Count Podcast. Make sure you follow them on all their social medias at Three Count Podcast with the number three, not the word spelled out. Check out all their interviews and other content interviews such as with myself and my partner Jeremy Grimes, Studio 22, and some other lesser ones. You know, they not all their guests are winners, but you know, you watch ours. It was fun. Um, shout out to my guy Red Dog Cliff. <laughs> Now, Welcome everybody to another great you. edition of the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering the Ring. I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller. That's right, the man that leads you up this mountain called wrestling. You could call me your Sherpa, but like every good Sherpa, you've got to have somebody who's been there, done that, and can do it more efficiently than you can. So it's never about me, it's about who's entering the ring. And today she comes to us from EWE. NTW, EPW, SWF, GTF, and Asylum Pro in the future. This is the most chaotic bitch at level 33. Give it up for Raina Black. It's so weird hearing the new name. That's me. <laughs> I know I saw it before and I was like, oh, I was like, this is awesome. She changed it. And so I was like, we're going to just have to make a new cue card for her. So we'll just get it started. <laughs> Yeah, it's like one of those things you change your name and like you're used to seeing on like social media and then you hear it and you're like, who? Oh, that's me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> totally forgot. The same with like when you when you change your music, you know, it's changed. But then when it hits and you're at the curtain, you're like, oh, shit, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was I, I'm trying to remember if I like when I debut, did I have a I didn't. I think I debuted at SCWA. I don't even remember if I had music at the time. And it was like, here recently I introduced like Danger Zone by Hollow Point. Um, Mm -hmm. And like, like I started vibing off of it and it just like, I could feel like the crowd is vibing off of it too. So I was like, I think we have a winner here. I think this is going to be the winner. My very first song was Mary Magdalene's uh, Wicked Ones. I had to remember the name of it it's been so long (laughs) (laughs) that's awesome though so i'm curious we're gonna ask this right after jump who is reina black Mm, the bitch that is the bitch and will always be that bitch (laughs) i like it too because i saw it on your i saw it on your uh twitter that you put up there uh, level 33 chaotic bitch and i was like that's so good (laughs) and that's because like I like to tell people, I'm not a heel, I'm not a face. I'm chaotic neutral. If this was Dungeons and Dragons, I would roll the dice for me. I don't give a shit about your elf. Fuck your dwarf. It's about me. (laughs) (laughs) I like that, though. I feel like this is kind of like my character, too, because, like, I'm not really the good guy, but I'm not really the bad guy either. I just, I'm just here to fuck things up and just have fun. Exactly. Like, I like violence. I like to beat people up, and that's what wrestling is. I don't care about being liked or disliked. This is so true. I love this. This is like <laughs> this, this is definitely uh definitely the right route to head down. So I'm curious though, like what brought you into the sport? Like, how'd you get started? <laughs> Listen, I'm always joked around saying if I ever made it big, I had that stupid like point to the sign story. Because I literally went to an indie show, was talking to DJ Hyde, owner of CZW at that time, and was just bullshit with him, bullshit with him, didn't realize he was the owner of the company, and then he was like, you should come train, and I went to train that Monday, I was talking to him on a Saturday, started training that Monday, and been there ever since. (laughs) That's awesome. It's funny too. Yeah, it was like just idle conversations. Well, that's good though, man. That's how you make those like cool network. That's how you make the great connections. Because maybe previously on an episode that came before this one, uh, I was telling someone that I use my trainer's connections all the time to meet people and bring them on the podcast. And I was like, and I'm pretty sure. Good to have. I was like, I'm pretty sure he gets tired of me just being like, 
oh come on cliff like stop <laughs> like <laughs> nope not at all <laughs> listen a lot of us wrestlers are like stop don't say that but then in like inside we're like keep going keep going go ahead <laughs> stop like i i don't bring this attention to me bring all the attention to me <laughs> that's exactly that's exactly what it is but oh i'll man. tell the truth right i just i i can't wait to see second get his name mentioned in two episodes back to back and he just inside he's just like yes i mean <laughs> this is great for my student but yes <laughs> i i have to put him give him some credit where credit is due he uh he's helped me a lot in a couple of years that me and him have been friends like we've known each other for a good while but then we started traveling together and he always looks out for people like without hesitation and that's really cool to have in wrestling yeah and it's kind of cool too because like one thing i do i do appreciate is that He's one of those trainers that he's going to let you like he's going to tell you like, hey, like you should go down this route and not this route, but you can go down that route. But I'll be here to let you know, like you went down that route and I told you to come down this route. I'm like, oh, yeah, because wrestling, you have to have that learning experience. You have to like get out and fall a couple of times. And then the trainer's just like, told you so. You're like, all right, I'm back. <laughs> all right you got my it. bad <laughs> like damn dude <laughs> so curious like you, you've been in the sport for a while uh what's been the worst bump you've taken worst bump oh mm. I, I can't really say that there's any like that were terrible i was going over drills and i dislocated my kneecap that was one of the worst pains of my life because it was like it popped and I immediately like couldn't put any pressure on my leg. I was down on my ass. And I'm just like, I'm ruined. <laughs> Didn't even know what was wrong, but I'm just like, this, this isn't good. This is not good at all. <laughs> yeah. I was sharing a story about how uh, I was doing drills and I did a simple three quarter roll and tore my lower abdomen and I was out for eight weeks and Oof. I was not happy <laughs> yeah I was doing a um a do -si do and I dislocated my knee because my leg was planted oh. and my leg moved with my foot planted it was just like oh <laughs> and it's funny because apparently when you dislocate kneecaps they go inward that's just generally how they're supposed to dislocate when they dislocate yeah mine decided to go outwards mm. so it was really scary like the emts cut my pant leg and i'm just like oh no <laughs> <laughs> doctor had to tell me to chill out she's like it's not broken it's just dislocated i'm like so i'm not dead she's like no <laughs> <laughs> bet well, then I'm curious. So you, I've seen that you've been in tons of intergender matches as well as just, you know, obviously in the women's world, wrestling world as well. But I need to know who has ever hit you the hardest? Who's ever, oof, 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 oof. Um, mm. It's funny, it's actually a girl. <laughs> a Maryland girl at that, Casey Carlisle. She uh, rocked me once and I'm just like, oh do I owe you money <laughs> <laughs> I mean I like to feel the hits because like I've worked people that did like the show wrestling and there was barely any contact so it was like ow oh no <laughs> yeah I I like uh I like feeling like some contact like I just can't do like the can't do like a uh, powder puff hit. And I'm just like, no, 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 no. You got to give me something to sell. Like I, I definitely, you know, I want to get pushed exactly. back. I, I need to get hit. I need to register or something. <laughs> so I'm covered in tattoos. So if it doesn't hurt, I'm just like a deer in headlights. Like, <laughs> oh, ow. Oh yeah. So, oh, that's so painful. <laughs> so curious, like, once like a show's over, right? What's your post match snack? 
I really don't have like a snack like that I go to. I'm a, I'm a monster addict. <laughs> oh, nice. Do you have a certain flavor you like? Um, I like the Alter Zero. What is it? The black, the cherry. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm a, that's my favorite. It's my go-to. I'm a sucker for the punch, the uh, the pink can one. It's like the punch flavor. The pipeline punch. Yeah, that's my. There was favorite. actually a good two years where I was trying to uh, get them to sponsor me in wrestling. I threatened to change my name to like Kylie, Kylie Monster. As long as like they sponsored me, I'd have wrestling like Monster Wrestling gear. They uh yeah, there's a whole flavor now called Hydro. It's the Hydro series for a Monster, and one of the flavors is red dog and i'm like i i don't remember getting this call like at all <laughs> see I, I tried i really did like i was tweeting them i was putting them on instagram i'm surprised i didn't get like a cease and desist from them <laughs> yeah I, I can't wait one of these days these guys are gonna be like oh he's he's not playing no he's really he's that guy like yeah 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 this nickname has traveled with me everywhere from elementary school to junior high, to high school to college to the military to the wrestling world, <laughs> like it is mine. <laughs> now that I think of it, I think bitches followed me uh, through my thirty-three levels of life. <laughs> but I'm just curious. Okay, so this is like one of my favorite questions to ask, like everybody. What's been like one of the hardest lessons you've had to learn? Take people's comments with a grain of salt like the, the keyboard warriors because there'll be people that say shit just to say shit and they don't know the ins or outs of it or they have an assumption of what it might be like I've been told that I'm fat I should never wrestle because I'm a big girl I've been told to go kill myself because of my body size and I'm just like eh. some people like meat some people like bones it is what it is <laughs> it's true it's true you know, I, I feel like, I feel like that's, you know, it's, it's weird too. Cause like in, a, in, on the wrestling, on the women's side of wrestling, like, like y'all got it rough. Like I know some dudes who are out there and tell me all the time, they're like, yeah, we, we get like unsolicited picks all the time. And I'm like, this is gross, but I'm pretty sure that the moment that a female puts out there that she's a pro wrestler, dudes are just in her inbox. I just believe I, I don't know it to be true, but I just believe that the moment that they're just like, hey, I do this, and then just like flooded with dudes just in their inbox for no reason. Yes, I've gotten a bunch of mushroom picks, as I put it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, and it's weird because like I, I've talked, so even just like back in the, in the back of the locker room, just like I get nervous like approaching, like I can go talk to any male wrestler, right? And just be like, hey man, I have this podcast. Love to have you come on the show. And you know, we could just chop shop and I can ask questions. I get so nervous asking females like, hey, do you want to come on the podcast? And the reason why is because I can only imagine that they open up their DMs, right? And there's probably like 80 dudes in there like, you want to come on my podcast? I'm like, fuck. <laughs> it's not so bad podcast questions but like my and Facebook isn't that bad because I have the like page and then I have my shoot page but my Instagram my message request I go through once a week just as entertainment and it's like do you want a sugar daddy I'll wrestle you I'll beat you up and I'm just like oh Jesus <laughs> in between the thousand dollars a week and the I can fight you messages is just like ugh shot yeah. please <laughs> yeah i can only i can only imagine that's why I love, i'm always like i get nervous and there's like other other wrestlers that I reach out to and i'm just like hey like very shyly like hi <laughs> so i'm i'm curious though like what um what kind of advice would you have for like upcoming wrestlers um train train your ass off be humble because people talk a lot about being humble and they throw that shit at the door and know your worth. Like there's too many people in this business that don't like, they'll say that or they'll say like, 
oh, I'm worth this. And then they don't really realize like what they're worth is. And people can take that as a bad thing, as a good thing, but just, just know your worth in this business. Because I see too many people, I'm not going to say any names, but they just, they work for a hot dog and a handshake. And like, yeah, this business should not be your only like financial system, but there's no sense of putting yourself out there getting hurt for just somebody saying, good job, kid. See you next show. You know, I definitely can understand that. I can definitely, definitely understand. I know like, even for me, like, I'm just, I know like I'm older in this wrestling game, like in the sense of like my age wise, but I'm still relatively young. And I do see that a lot now too. And I'm just like, I feel like you should know better, but all right. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying wrestling should be your like fi- your financial stability. Like you should always have money coming in other than wrestling because unless you're on TV, wrestling's not really going to pay your bills working weekend to weekend. It's not the 80s anymore. It, this is 2021. You're getting five bucks if you if that anymore, and it's just like. <laughs> And I'd hate to say it, and a lot of it is is they're paying these people that they bring into the show once or twice, like 600 bucks. And then these poor other guys are, like I said, getting a handshake, getting a good job here and there. And it's like, maybe we should treat people like equals. Wrestling probably wouldn't be such a, a petty place if we were all treated equally. It's true. It's true. So I imagine you've probably been in like a lot of locker rooms. So what I really want to know is one do and one don't of the locker room. Do always shake hands, say hello to people, but do not interrupt people when they're talking, like going over a match. Like always say hi, bye. It's just a respectable thing. But like if you see two people talking and they're like, all right, we're going to do this, that, the work drop down, leapfrog, duck one, take two. Don't come in and be like, hi, I'm Joe Snow from the Alamo because you just rate, you made yourself look like an asshole right there. <laughs> I like that one though. I do, I do see that a lot where like people would just awkwardly stand to the side and like I, I'll sit at the table and I know that I've said something, I haven't said hi to like that person like over on the other side. So I'll just wait. Mm-hmm. I'll watch them like work their match and stuff, like or like talk it over. And then when they're like just done, they're like separated or something. I'll walk over and I'll just be like, "Hey, what's up? I'm Cliff," and then shake your hand, and just bounce. I was like, "I'm like, I'm not trying to waste time. I'm not trying to be like all up in your business. I just, I genuinely, I'm just like, hey." Yeah, like the last show I was at, I kept apologizing because I had to come cutting through people in a hallway to, as they were calling their match. I'm like, I'm so sorry to cut through again, like. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm not here. <laughs> no. I need to get by. <laughs> You're kind of in the way, but I really, yeah, I'm trying to just move around y'all. But I'm curious yeah, though. So if that's like your, still there. So if that's like your do, then what is your don't? Mm. I really don't have any don'ts because there's just things that you're gonna learn throughout the course don't be a mark that's a big one (laughs) and that doesn't mean for like the names that are on the show just just don't be a mark don't be a mark for yourself like there's a a sense of being cocky and confidence in yourself but there's some people that walk around with their heads so far up that it's it's pretty much up their own ass it's like how the fuck did you do a complete 360 with your head (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I like that. I like that a lot. It's just good in life anyway, not to be a jerk. Like, don't, don't be that guy. Don't be that person. Yeah. Don't, don't be that snob. Snobs yeah. don't get anywhere. I hate snobby people. Like I'm from the most ghetto part of Philadelphia. So I cannot be like. <laughs> well, bet those are like all my like heavy hitting questions, but we do got to get into the second best segment of all of the three count podcasts everybody asks what's the first it's the red dogs power rankings that you can find every sunday on our debate show but this is the I three better count. be number one at all times 
<laughs> oh, wait, don't be a mark. Never mind. <laughs> there's yeah, don't be a mark. All right. There's levels to this. <laughs> but this is the three count podcast, 10 count questions. And Renee, this is how it works. I'm gonna fire off 10 questions, quit 10 questions at you rapid fast. Whatever's your answer, that's your answer. Oh, I hate these. Okay, let's do this. No pressure. Oh, that's great because we're gonna add the imaginary timer for added pressure. Oh. We go SmackDown or Raw? Ah, uh, Raw. Favorite movie? Rocky Horror Picture Show. Let's do the time warp thing. <laughs> that is me. <laughs> <laughs> Trish or Lita? Lita. Favorite color? Purple. Liquor or beer? Liquor. Favorite submission? Mm. The Taz Mission. Oh, yes. Sonic or Mario? <gasps> oh, no. Link. Oh, man. It just went third choice. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite podcast? Um, I guess this one, because I really don't do podcasts. Works for me. And then uh, nominate one person that you want to see on this podcast. Um, hmm. I don't know. Uh, a lot of people that I know have been on it. I'd like to see uh, Ronnie Flores on there. She's okay. my new buddy. Okay. And then last but not least, my favorite question asked every single person who comes on this show. Yeah, I wanted to take an idea. I guess you already favorite went curse word. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs a good F bomb. That's that's just like the only thing that needs to be said. I say it a lot. I tell people all the time, I was like, look, there's a YouTube video out there. It's called The History of the F Word. It's like five minutes long, and it's the greatest five minutes that you'll ever see. So, I actually know the history behind the word fuck. You know how, like, people used to say fuck and say pardon my French? Yeah. Fuck is actually a French word. It's le fuck, and it means seal. So that's where they got the saying pardon my French when they said fuck. You know what's so great is that I would love to see <laughs> the guy that was like, that sounds like a great curse word. <laughs> like, just be like, fuck. Like what? We're like it's funny. <laughs> That's one of the few things I didn't look up. Like me and my eighty-six-year-old grandmother actually just looked up where they got the words "hooker" from. <laughs> no, my that favorite. Was our conversation. Where did hookers come from? <laughs> they came from Toy Story. That's where it was. You know, it Little was. <laughs> Damn it, Sid. Damn Sid. You always got to be doing those things. Those are all my questions. The only thing I need from you is to let our viewers and our listeners know where they can find you. Everywhere and anywhere. <laughs> um, upcoming shows, I'm at the Asylum. I'll be at SWF in January. Really don't have anything on my plate right now. This is the, uh, the Phoenix part where I'm blossoming into the new Reign of Black. But you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under Reign of Black. Yes. I don't have any cool things like Twitch or yeah. anything like that. I was like, yet, yet. Yet, yet. <laughs> Bet. Well, that's it. So we, we got to take it home. That's that's what we do. So this is the Three Count Podcast presents Now in Trinity Ring. And like I said, I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, the man that leads you up this mountain called wrestling. You could call me your Sherpa, but like every good Sherpa, you got to have someone who's been there done that and can do it more efficiently than you can so with that being said it's never about me it's about who's entering the ring and you see it right next to me reign of black herself so you guys know what to do tune into the next episode and be there or you just wait for this episode to end you or get beat up <laughs> you wait for that outro and you choose another episode peace <laughs> Hey, Three Count Podcast listeners, it's your host, the icon Chaz Evans here. Make sure 
you follow us on all social media platforms. That's uh, the Facebook, that's the Twitter, that's the Instagram, that's the Snapchat. Wait, we don't have Snapchat. The photo, but we don't have photo bucket. But make sure you follow us on all those things at 3 Count Podcast or at 3 Count underscore pod. That's on the Twitter, by the way, 3 Count underscore pod. But yeah, definitely also make sure you check out our YouTube channel and uh, subscribe to our videos. And if you really like us a lot, a lot, definitely go find us on ProWrestlingTees.com slash the number three count pod and get yourself a three count podcast t-shirt and make sure you continue listening to us.